Hey there guys, what's up? Hope all is going well in your world today. I um, hope you guys also got something for your moms for Mother's Day yesterday. Um, if not, tsk tsk and shame on you and you should go apologize. But anyways, today in this video tutorial, we are looking again at the DVD Studio Pro series. Um, again, we have one more episode of this left after this episode. Um, so then after that, you know, if you guys want to see something else, um, leave me some ideas down below in the comment section. Um, but anyways, today in this episode, we're looking at how to create some different um, colors for your buttons, along with how to transition um, between different video clips using alpha transitions and just your basic normal old transitions. So here I got this basic menu. Nothing's going on quite yet in here. But I'm going to bring in a different video asset um, just so that we have something tra uh, to tra transition to in a little bit. Um, it's the same old video clip that we've been using for a little bit. This is kind of like the yellow speaker circles, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I'm going to quickly come over here to the main title screen and bring in a little button. There we have the button. Um, we can call this the play button or really whatever you want to do. Um, I'll just call this play for right now. Um, and I'm going to come over here quickly and um, change the target of that button. So now that we have them linked together, indicated by this little arrow. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the colors. So making sure that this button is selected, come over here to the inspector window. Um, and we're going to come over here to the colors tab. Um, now there's two main ways of um, approaching this. So you have the simple version, which is I think a little bit kind of almost more confusing and it's very limited. While over here we have the advanced features where um, you have a couple things that I think are a little bit useless. Um, however, really creating the buttons themselves is a little bit simpler. And in fact, I think it just makes more sense. So I'm going to be using the advanced features today. Um, if you guys want to use the simple ones, go ahead, but I recommend going with the advanced. Um, right below that, we have the mapping type. Um, there's two options, chroma or grayscale. Um, basically, that means, you know, um, does you want this graphic to be based on grayscale images, like the blacks, the grays, and the whites, or chroma, which is basically all colors of the rainbow. Um, I recommend sticking with chroma. It makes more sense, and it really it's not, you know, bringing down your system anymore um, than it would with a grayscale. Right below that, we have the selection state, which um, basically means this is the color that your button will appear if you're just, you know, not selecting it, if it's just part of the background. Um, to the right of that, we have the selected state, which basically means if your button is selected, this is the color that it will appear as. And also the far right one is the activate state. So that means if someone were to click on the button um, using a DVD remote, this is the color that it will be. So using the far left one, um, basically looking right down below here, we have the different colors. The first one is probably the one that you're going to be using the most, and it's the most prominent color that's um, seen when you're, you know, in the different states. We can change the colors just by doing this. We can change it to a blue. And to the right of that, we have the opacity slider. So, you know, little opacity means it's mostly see-through. There's not a lot of color. If you have high opacity, that means um, it's not very see-through and there's a lot of color. Um, I recommend mostly just kind of sticking with a very neutral color um, for this, uh, the normal state. Something kind of like this. Um, maybe the one thing that I like to do is um, using the different, um, the same colors, just the different opacities through the normal and selected state. And um, for example, if I had this white color, and maybe I brought the opacity down to like a five, um, come over here to the selected state, making sure the same color is selected, and just bringing up the opacity a lot. Um, if I were to simulate this DVD really quickly, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. See, um, right now that button over there, it's not really um, see-through. Just kind of nonchalant. It's blended into the background. But if I were to put my cursor over it, it'll light up, and I, I'm, I think that's um, something that it's nice. You know, it's not very intrusive, it's not very busy, it's not very colorful, but it just kind of flows well. Um, also, one thing that I um, forgot to mention is the um, different sets. Um, now, each different um, set, um, you can have four different colors in these sets. Basically, a set is a collection of four colors that you can apply to a certain button. Um, for example, you know, if you wanted state, um, set one to be for one specific button, that means you can change the different colors for the normal, selected, and activated states for that button. And then if you want to have another button on set two, basically that means you can have a different set of colors for that specific button for the different states. Um, if you, you know, want to learn more about that, I recommend just opening up DVD Studio Pro and playing around with some of these features. It's pretty straightforward, but you know, for me, it was kind of a little bit hard to get my um, head wrapped around and really understanding. Um, plus, my system is a little bit funky with these for some reason. 
Um, I bet, you know, Apple will probably release a new update soon, um, helping with the buttons. So anyways, um, that's more or less the colors. Um, these two sliders in the middle, they don't really do a whole lot. Like I was saying earlier, they're, you know, it's only, these will only work under very specific conditions. And um, with that, I kind of think they're a little bit useless. But, you know, for those of you who might need that, um, they'll work pretty well. Um, also, on the normal state, all the buttons on the screen will have to be just one specific color. The, um, the different sets don't work on the normal state, um, only on the selected and activated states. And the last thing I want to quickly mention is this very last um, slider down here at the bottom. Um, the very last slider kind of creates a sort of a background, um, or kind of like a mat for your different buttons. Um, just really quickly, I'll demo, um, demo this for you guys. If we come over here to the normal state, and let's say maybe we want to change a, a red background. And then bring up the opacity. It just creates the entire background that um, spe um, a specific red color, which you know again I think it's kind of something a little bit useless. Um, I can see why it might be useful for the activated state because in the activated state it only works um, like a very kind of a very soft mat. Like um, if I bring up the opacity and kind of see what's going on here, maybe or maybe not. Oh wait, I'm on different sets. There we go. Let me see if I can bring this back over here. Bring up the opacity again, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about is create sort of like a little mat. So if I were to quickly simulate this, you can kind of see what's going on. See, so put my cursor over it, it lights up. Click on it, creates that um, little yellow color along with a white mat. So if that's something you want to be, you know, using, by all means, go ahead. But you know, like I'm saying, I kind of feel like those things are a little bit useless. Now let's talk about the transitions. So we got our button all made with the different colors, and we love it so far. Um, over here in the inspector window, just come over here to the far right where it says transitions, and this is the entire transition window. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and really there's a lot of useful transitions. So coming down here, we have a couple different options right up here, and then at the very bottom we have all the different alpha transitions. Um, if you don't know what an alpha transition is, basically it means it's a transition um, using a different video asset. Um, I'll supply a link down below in the description if you want to learn more about um, video or alpha transitions. Um, it's a video made by Apple Shake Guru, I believe is his name. Um, he's a great guy, and really, um, I think he's you know more or less knows his stuff pretty darn well. Um, he can kind of you know go through it and survive. Um, so watch some of um, that video if you want to learn more about it. But anyways, um, let's just quickly select one of these. Um, for example, of the blur transition, um, right below that we have the different duration periods. Uh, we make it 10 minutes long, or 10 seconds long, or 2 seconds long. Really, I wouldn't recommend you know making it super long. Um, we also have different um, parameters to adjust, like this, if you want a soft blur or more of an intense blur. Um, and over here, right next to the transition selector, we can actually hit preview and kind of see a little bit of what's going to be actually happening here in the uh, transition window. And then that would um, instantly transition to your video clip that you have selected as a target. Um, if we're using a different alpha transition, we kind of use the start um, and end screens a little bit more. Um, however, for the most part, I think this is a little bit useless for the um, just basic transitions. Um, we can also then select a different transition. Um, a lot of these have a lot of different, um, I suppose, parameters to adjust, like the velo um, viscosity, I suppose, is how, you know, slowly it would melt away and also the duration um, maybe like let's say a little longer than three seconds we need the preview window see how it looks if we want to increase the viscosity a little bit we can or we can very you know more or less put it at a zero and it just kind of slowly melts away um, so you know maybe check around play with some of these different parameters and um, if you guys want to um, if you guys want to see how to make your own alpha transitions, maybe I'll make a tutorial sometime in the near future. Um, let me know down below in the comment section. Um, you can create your own just by using the little video transition feature down here, um, then using your different assets. Um, but to tell you the truth, I think that the um, alpha transitions using inside of DVD Studio Pro is a little bit more harder to control. Um, I really like the alpha transitions that you can use um, all using Final Cut. Um, those are you know more or less straightforward, simple, and if you want to use an alpha transition, I recommend just putting it at the very beginning of your movie and then um, more or less creating a very basic transition using DVD Studio Pro so that it kind of would look like an alpha transition. However, um, you kind of being a sneaky little devil and just using an um, alpha transition um, inside of Final Cut Studio instead of using DVD Studio Pro. So anyways, that's been this tutorial. If you guys liked it, 
hit the little subscribe button up above. I'm making these once a week, every Monday, um, probably until like late summertime. Um, that's still to be decided. I don't even know if I'll ever stop these. I kind of enjoy it. Um, also, if you want to stay more connected, you can like us on Facebook. That link will be down below in the description. I'll update the, I'll update the page every time I upload a new video. Um, also, check out the website. That link is down below in the description as well. Um, so anyways, you know, if you guys have any um, ideas for future tutorials, let me, um, let me know down below in the description, or I suppose in the comment section. Um, make sure to like this video, and I will see you guys next week with a brand new, uh, or with the very last, DVD Studio Pro tutorial. I'm talking about burning your discs and um, all the different options that you can use using that. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I shall see you next week. Peace out.